Hello! So, Asobo have released the next aircraft in their series of local legends, and it's the, let me get this right, Latte Coeur in Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's a ginormous French flying boat from the 1930s and 40s. And it's worth just having a look at how well modelled this thing is. It's absolutely amazing. Obviously it's come out in time for the world update, I think it's the France 2 world update, so there's a number of cities that now have photogrammetry and custom 3D assets throughout France, and obviously to come out in time with that is this French flying boat. So there are none of these left in the real world, so this is all built from um, accounts and you know historical documents and, phot and photographs. So if we go and have a look inside, We'll go and jump in through the glass into the cockpit and just the detail is just next level it's unbelievable and a lot of this hardware works i mean there are some generalizations in places but we're not going to get too down on it okay so if we go and jump through this doorway yeah, there's nothing this way so we're going to jump down I'm using the drone camera to do this to make our job a little bit easier so let's go and jump into the cabins up at the nose so you can see there are various doors that do open and then we can go down through the interior and they have modeled the entire passenger interior of the aeroplane so this is kind of shots fired, I guess, to other developers saying, you know, this is the standard that you're going to have to try and reach. And it's one hell of a standard. We've got polished wood and material and we've got anti-rooms along the way. It's unbelievable, basically. We've got bunk beds. So obviously this aircraft was used to do transatlantic crossings and it would have taken a long time because it can't go very fast. So the passengers would have been on here for quite some time. So there's yeah, showers and washrooms, toilets. It really is something else, isn't it? Okay, let's just jump through the wall to go back outside and have a look. Okay, so we are going to work through getting this thing up and running and do a basic takeoff with it in the bay here we are at um this, we're on a uh, on the edge of an airfield on the south of france basically so we're just going to lift the airplane up off of its trolley if you spawn in on a parking stand the airplane gets put on this trolley so we will use slew to lift it off the trolley drop it into the water and then disable slew. Okay, so I'm going to go and put my Xbox controller to one side, which I was using to control the um, the views, and we'll see how we get on. Okay, so press insert. So we're now in the normal cockpit view inside the aeroplane, and as you can see, as I, as I said, it's something else, this thing. It really is. Okay, you will notice a sticky note if you do spawn on a landing spot, or sorry, on a parking spot. The aircraft should be on water to take off. So what we're going to do is press Y, then hold F4 on, push it out into the water, press F1. Notice the, if I just, well, I'll press Y again. We are now floating around and the trolley has gone automatically once we're on water, okay? So let's just have a look at this. The way it sits in the water is even very good. It's really, really something special. I had something I noticed earlier. It might not do it unless we're actually moving along. It splashes when the waves roll underneath. So sometimes when the waves compress in, they splash. Even when it's at, you know almost not going anywhere. So I think we're going to be blown back towards the... You can see it's... Um, it's slowly turning into the wind, which of course it will do. Okay, so we're not going to worry too much about the aeroplane floating around, and we'll go through what we need to do to get the aeroplane up and running. So first things first, in the controller configuration, I have mapped one throttle lever to the throttle axis. 
I am not controlling the throttles independently, mainly because there are six of them, and these are the levers for them. So you can see we can move them there. So I'm moving all six in one go. I'm not even attempting to try and map the throttles. Okay, so we start out in the electrical section, which is control and eight. I will put a link to my instructions in the notes of the video. We turn the battery switch to Marche, which is up here. And then we go to the engine management section, control seven. And we are going to move all of the magneto levers, which are these ones up here, to the up position by rolling the mouse wheel on them. Oops. Okay. We are going to open the throttle slightly, or open the throttles slightly. Then we're going to go to the engine management section again, So, and we're going to turn around to face the opposite direction using the mouse, so I'm holding the right mouse button down to do that. Okay, so in the APU master control section, which is down here, we are going to press the APU starter, the right button. Let's just make sure you can hear things. I'm just going to check my volume mixer settings as well, yeah, so just making sure that you can hear the same things I can hear. Okay, so you can hear the APU engine ticking away in the background. So then, then we need to turn on the generators for the APU, and they are the fourth, fifth and sixth flick switches down here. So they all go to the down position. Then we go to the fuel valve section, the pipe work on the right hand side. And we turn the primer to on, that's the left knob. Okay. And then we go to the fuel pump section, which is up here, and we turn this knob to the right. Then we go over to the engine condition section with control 9. So this is like turning the corner at the back of the cockpit. We are going to move all of the fuel condition levers, which are over here, to rich. So if we, we'll have a close look at this in a moment. So if we have a look at the labelling on these, you've got rich, you've got auto rich and auto lean, which obviously makes sense, you know, once you're in the air. So it works much like a lot of the other aeroplanes. Go back to the engine management section. Go to the starter section, the row of six plungers, and we are now going to start each engine one after another. It doesn't really matter what order you do them in. So if you listen carefully, actually, before we do that, let's get this lined up with the view. I want you to see this happen. So we pull the plunger. And we do the next one. Pull the plunger. I love that. I think that's fantastic. Pull the plunger. Okay, let's put the view around to the other side. The inboard engine. And the middle engine. And the outboard engine. Okay, the engines are running. So then we go back inside, so we'll press the end key. We're going to go to the control 8 view again, so that was there already. We look behind ourselves again. Now we're going to flip all of the switches across here, the, the generator switches, to the down position. Meaning the engines are now generating electricity and you can see all those needles flicking across as we did it on the ammeters. We then turn the APU starter to off, so that's this one here. We turn the APU generators to off, so they were the, if you remember, the fourth, fifth and sixth of the switches. Engine management section, control and eight. That's here again. We turn the now, let me get this right. The relays switch goes back to RA, so we're turning that back off. So we're pro we're not providing power to fire up the engines anymore. They're already running. And in the engine condition station, control nine, we're going to move the RPM to max across all of the engines. So this is the RPM levers. So we're now putting the propellers up to speed, basically. Okay, we're essentially ready to take off now.
So we can move the flaps to their down position. So you can either do that with your controls or you've got the switch here. So you've got a zero or 17 degrees. There's nothing in between. So you can see as the flaps, they've lowered themselves. They do take time to travel. Obviously, while we were talking, they'd already traveled. This is the floats control. If you have a look around just before we take off, you'll notice this is the power for the, or the gyro system for the autopilot. That's automatically on when you get into the airplane. So to engage the autopilot or the um, stabilization system, I guess you might call it, you've got the switch here for it. The left hand switch here is altitude hold. The right hand switch is heading hold. And that will engage with the use of this direction finder. Yeah. So if we go and open the engines up. And we'll watch this from outside. As I said, it splashes. It's very cool. I think this is probably the best flying boat I've seen. So we've got aileron control now. We can go left aileron and lift that float out of the water now. So obviously I'm just doing this by feel. I'm not using any kind of numbers, but I think it's 150 knots you're looking for to get off the water. So, and we're up. How cool is that? Okay, so let's go and look inside and we will lift the floats. Can we do that? Is it going to let us? Okay. What is going on? I think I've got a bug here. Maybe we can't do that with the flaps. I'll raise the flaps first. Yeah, there you go. There's a control around that. So you can't raise them. Well, oh, of course the flaps will get in their way, I imagine. So there's a safety built into that. So I'm learning something all the time with this aeroplane at the moment. What an amazing looking aeroplane though, hey? So that's all I wanted really to cover today was how to get the aeroplane started up and into the air. Doesn't it look gorgeous though? Absolutely gorgeous. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. There's obviously a lot to learn and we'll be doing some journeys with this plane over time. So I'll look forward to seeing you soon with it. Take care.